But let's go further back in draft history, back to the mid-30s when this all started, and see how Chicago played a role. Arthur Arkish has this look at the very first draft. Chicago has long been known as the hard-hitting black and blue center of the football universe, a fitting place for this year's NFL draft. As a matter of fact, the history of the NFL draft began right here, where the first player selected played his college ball behind these gates at the University of Chicago. Jay Berlanger was a tough, hard-nosed football player. Players feared him on the field. Uh, he was tough on offense, uh, of course, but he also played defense. and. Uh, would say that he really enjoyed playing defense more than offense at times because uh, he could deliver a hit rather than receive a hit. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the process of Jay earning the Heisman, which at the time was referred to as, I believe, the Downtown Manhattan Athletic Club Award. Uh, after the season had just ended, the 1935 season, uh, Jay Berwanger received a telegram that said, congratulations you have uh, won the Downtown Athletic Club trophy. Do you think once Jay won that award and, and the first ever NFL draft is coming up, um, was he the favorite to be the top pick? Was that his expectation? Was that uh, the public's expectation that he would in fact be that person? Well, the, the draft was pretty informal and it was the first NFL draft. Uh, Burt Bell of the Philadelphia Eagles had dreamed up this concept of the team that had finished last would get the first draft pick. When the draft was held, they wrote uh, 90 players' names on blackboards. The nine teams in the NFL uh, went through 10 rounds of, of picks, and there he had it. But the very first player of the very first NFL draft was uh, Jay Berwanger of Chicago. How does Chicago come into the story next? I understand that there was some interaction between Berwanger and George Hallis, a, a very, very famous figure in this town. Right. Well, so the Eagles held the rights to Jay Berwanger, and uh, the Eagles promptly traded the rights to sign Berwanger to George Hallis and the Chicago Bears. Negotiations, if you will, between Jay Berwanger and George Hallis consisted of a chance meeting in the Chicago hotel lobby. George Hallis said, Jay, what's it going to take to get you on the Bears? Jay Berwanger said, it's going to take $25,000, a two-year, no-cut contract. In the day, that was totally out of the question. George Hallis looked at uh, Jay's date and said, very nice to meet you, enjoy your party, and that was the end of any negotiations. I think the main thing to remember about Jay Berwanger was he was successful not only in athletics, but in his personal life and his business life. He uh, gave a lot of uh, time and, and his uh, energy to uh, endeavors in Chicago and made Chicago his home and uh, stayed here the rest of his days. Now it's worth noting, folks, that in those days the Bears, the Packers, the Giants, they ruled the NFL. They didn't love the idea of helping the weaker teams compete, but it was George Hallis who saw the wisdom of even competition, and it was Hallis who helped Burt Bell get his draft proposition become reality.